Hi everyone, it's Miss Cross here and I'm going to be reading the next part of your longer story, Holes. Now, I'm going to be carrying on from where Mr Watkins got to and obviously, as you will have heard, he did some wonderful accents throughout. Now, I have to admit, I'm not particularly good at accents, but I'm going to give it a good go. You're just not allowed to laugh if they're a little bit funny. Right, let's get started with chapter 29. There was a change in the weather, for the worse. The air became unbearably humid. Stanley was drenched in sweat. Beads of moisture ran down the handle of his shovel. It was almost as if the temperature had gotten so hot that the air itself was sweaty. A loud boom of thunder echoed across the empty lake. A storm was way off to the west beyond the mountains. Stanley could count more than 30 seconds between the flashes of lightnings and claps of thunder. That was how far away the storm was. Sound travels a great distance across the barren wasteland. Usually, Stanley couldn't see the mountains at this time of day. The only time that they were visible was just at sunup before the air became hazy. Now, however, the sky was very dark off to the west and every time the lightning flashed, the dark shape of the mountains would briefly appear. Come on, rain, shouted Armpit. Blow this way. Maybe it will rain so hard that it will fill up the whole lake, said Squid. We can go swimming. 40 days and 40 nights, said X-Ray. Guess we'd better get started building an ark. Get out each of two animals, right? Right, said Zigzag. Two rattlesnakes, two scorpions, two yellow spotted lizards. The humidity, or maybe the electricity in the air, had made Zigzag's head even more wild looking. His frizzy blonde hair stuck almost straight out. The horizon lit up with a huge web of lightning. In that split second, Stanley thought he could see an unusual rock formation on top of the mountain peaks. The peak looked to him exactly like a giant fist, with the thumb sticking straight up. Then it was gone, and Stanley wasn't sure whether he'd seen it or not. I found refuge on God's thumb. That was what his great-grandfather had supposedly said after Kate Barlow had robbed him and left him stranded in the desert. Nobody ever knew what he meant by that. He was delirious when he said it. But how could he live for three weeks without food or water? Stanley said, asked his father. I don't know. I wasn't there, replied his father. I wasn't born yet. My father wasn't born yet. My grandmother, your great-grandmother, was a nurse in the hospital where they treated him. He always talked about how she'd dab his forehead with a cold, wet cloth. He said that's why he fell in love with her. He thought she was an angel. A, a real angel? His father didn't know. What about after he got better? Did he ever say what he meant by God's thumb or how he survived? No, he just blamed his no good pig stealing father. The storm moved off farther west, along with any hope of rain. But the image of the fist and the thumb remained in Stanley's head. Although, instead of lightning flashes behind the thumb, in Stanley's mind, the lightning was coming out of the thumb as if it were God's thumb. Chapter 30. The next day was Zigzag's birthday, or so he said. Zigzag lay in his cot as everybody headed out. I get to sleep in because it's my birthday. Then a little while later, he cut into the breakfast line just in front of Squid. Squid told him to go to the end of the line. Hey, it's my birthday, Zigzag said, staying where he was. It's not your birthday, said Magnet, who was standing behind Squid. It is too, said Zigzag. July 8th. Stanley was behind Magnet. He didn't know what day of the week it was, let alone the date. It could have been July the 8th, but how would Zigzag know? He tried to figure out how long he'd been at Camp Green Lake, if indeed it was July the 8th. I came here on May 24th, he said aloud. So that means I've been here for... Um, 46 days, said Zero. Stanley was still trying to remember how many days there were in May and June. He looked at Zero. He'd learned not to doubt him when it came to maths. 46 days. It felt more like a thousand. He didn't dig a hole that first day and he hadn't dug one yet today. That meant he dug 44 holes, if it really was July the 8th. Can I have an extra carton of juice, said Zigzag to Mr Sir. It's my birthday. To everyone's surprise, Mr. Sir gave it to him. 
Stanley dug his shovel into the dirt. Hole number 45. The 45th hole is the hardest, he said to himself. But that really wasn't true and he knew it. He was a lot stronger than he was when he first arrived. His body had adjusted somewhat to the heat and the harsh conditions. Mr. Sir was no longer depriving him of water. After having to get by on less water for a week or so, Stanley now felt like he had got all the water he wanted. Of course, it helped that Zero dug some of his hole for him each day, but that wasn't as great as everyone thought it was. He always felt awkward when Zero was digging his hole, unsure of what to do with himself. Usually he stood around a while before sitting off by himself on the hard ground with the sun beating down on him. It was better than digging, but not a lot. When the sun came up a couple of hours later, Stanley looked for the thumb of God. The mountains were little more dark than shadows on the horizon. He thought he could make a spot where the top of one of the mountains seemed to jut upwards, but it didn't seem very impressive. A short time later, the mountains were no longer visible, hidden behind the glare of the sun reflecting off the dirty air. It was possible, he realised, that he was somewhere near where Kate Barlow had robbed his great-grandfather. If that was really her lipstick, lipstick tube he found, then she must have lived somewhere around here. Zero took his turn before the lunch break. Stanley climbed out of his hole and Zero climbed down it. Hey caveman, said Zigzag, you should get your whip. And then if your slave doesn't dig half enough, you can then crack it on his back. He's not my slave, said Stanley. We have a deal, that's all. A deal that's good for you, said Zigzag. It was Zero's idea, not mine. Do you know what, Zig? Said X-Ray coming over. Caveman's doing Zero a big favour. Zero likes to dig holes. You're sure a nice guy to let Zero dig his hole for him, said Squid. What about me, said Armpit? I like to dig holes too. I can dig for you, Caveman, after Zero's finished. The other two boys laughed. No, I want to, said Zigzag. It's my birthday. Stanley tried his best to ignore them. Zigzag kept at it. Come on, caveman, be a pal. Let me dig your hole. Stanley smiled as if it were all a big joke. When Mr. Pendanski arrived with water and lunch, Zigzag offered Stanley his place in the line. Since you're so much better than me, he said. Stanley remained where he was. I didn't say I was better. You're insulting him, Zig, said X-Ray. Why should Caveman take your place when he deserves to be at the very front? He's better than all of us, aren't you, Caveman? No, said Stanley. Sure you are, said X-Ray. Now come to the front of the line where you belong. Well, that's okay, said Stanley. No, it's not okay, said X-Ray. Get up here. Stanley hesitated. Then he moved to the front of the line. Well, this is a first, said Mr. Pendanski, coming around the side of the truck. He filled Stanley's canteen and handed him a lunch sack. Stanley was glad to get away. He sat down between his holes and zeros. He was glad that he wouldn't be digging his own hole for the rest of the day. Maybe the other boys would leave him alone. Maybe he shouldn't let Dave Zero dig his hole for him anymore. But he needed to save his energy to be a good teacher. He bit into his sandwich which contained some kind of meat and cheese mixture that came in a can. Just about everything at Green Lake came in a can. The supply crook came once a month. He glanced up to see Zigzag and Squid walking towards him. I'll give you my cookie if you dig my hole, said Zigzag. Squid laughed. Here, dig my cookie, said Zigzag, holding it out for him. No thanks, said Stanley. Come on, take my cookie, said Zigzag, sticking it in his face. Leave me alone, said Stanley. Please eat my cookie, said Zigzag, holding under Stanley's nose. Squid laughed. Stanley pushed it away. Zigzag pushed him back. Don't push me. I, di I didn't, Stanley got to his feet. He looked around. Mr. Pendanski was filling Zero's canteen. Zigzag pushed him again. I said, don't push me. Stanley took a step backwards, carefully avoiding Zero's hole. Zigzag kept after him. He shoved Stanley and said, 
quit pushing. Lay off, said Armpit, as he, Magnet and X-Ray joined them. Why shouldn't he, snapped X-Ray. Caveman's bigger, he can take care of himself. I don't want any trouble, said Stanley. Zigzag pushed him hard. Eat my cookie, he said. Stanley was glad to see Mr Pendangsty coming towards them, along with Zero. Hi, Mum, said Armpit. We were just falling around. I saw what was going on, Mr Pendangsty said. He turned to Stanley. Go ahead, Stanley. Hit him back. You're bigger. Stanley stared at Mr Pendansky in astonishment. Teach a bully a lesson, said Mr Pendansky. Zigzag hit Stanley on the shoulder with an open hand. Teach me a lesson, he challenged. Stanley made a feasible attempt to punch Zigzag. Then he felt a flurry of fist against his head and his neck. Zigzag had hold of his collar with one hand and was hitting him with the other. The collar ripped and Stanley fell backwards onto the dirt. That's enough, said Mr Pendansky. It wasn't enough, said Zigzag. He jumped on top of Stanley. Stop, shouted Mr Pendansky. The side of Stanley's face was pressed flat against the dirt. He tried to protect himself, but Zigzag's fist slammed off his arms and pounded his face onto the ground. All he could do was wait for it to be over. Then, suddenly, Zigzag was off him. Stanley managed to look up and he saw Zigzag. Zero had his arm around Zigzag's long neck. Zigzag was making a gagging sound as he desperately tried to pry Zero's arm off him. You're going to kill him, shouted Mr Pendansky. Zero kept squeezing. Armpit charged into them, freeing Zigzag from Zero's chokehold. The three boys fell to the ground in different directions. Mr Pendansky fired his pistol into the air. The other councillors came running from the office, the tents or out on the lake. They had their guns drawn but holstered when they saw that the trouble was over. The warden walked over from her cabin. There was a right riot, Mr Pandansky told her. Zero almost strangled Ricky. The warden looked at Zigzag, who was still stretching and massaging his neck. Then she turned her attention to Stanley, who obviously was in the worst condition. What happened to you? Nothing. It was just a riot. Ziggy was beating up caveman, said Arpit. Then Zero started choking Zigzag and I had to pull Zero off Zigzag. It was all over before Mum fired his gun. <sighs> they just got a little bit hot, that's all, said X-Ray. You know how it is in the sun all day, people get hot and ride. But everything's cool now. I see, said Warden turned to Ziggy. What's the matter? Didn't you get a puppy for your birthday? Zig's just a little hot, said X-Ray. Out in the sun all day, you know how it is. The blood starts to boil. Is that what happened, Zigzag? asked the warden. Yeah, said Zigzag. Like X-Ray said, working so hard in the sun while caveman just sits around does nothing, my blood boiled. Excuse me, said the warden. Caveman digs his holes just like everyone else. Zigzag shrugged. Sometimes. Excuse me. Zero's been digging part of Caveman's hole every day, said Squid. The warden looked from Squid to Stanley to Zero. I I'm teaching him to read and write, said Stanley. It's a sort of trade. The whole stuck gets dug, so what does it matter who digs it? Excuse me, said the warden. Isn't it more important to, for him to learn to read, said Stanley. Doesn't that build character more than digging holes? That's his character, said the warden. What about your character? Stanley raised and lowered one shoulder. The warden turned to Zero. Well, Zero, what have you learned so far? Zero said nothing. Have you just been digging caveman's hole for nothing? The warden asked him. He likes to dig holes, said Mr Pendansky. Tell me what you learned yesterday, said the warden. Surely you can remember that. Zero said nothing. Mr Pendansky laughed. He picked up a shovel and said, you might as well try to teach this shovel to read. It's got more brains than Zero. 
the at sound, said Zero. The at sound, repeated the warden. Well, tell me then, what does k at spell? Zero glanced around uneasily. Stanley knew he knew the answer. Zero just didn't like answering questions. Cat, said Zero. Mr. Podunsky plucks his hands. Bravo, bravo, the boy's a genius. At, asked the warden. Zero thought for a moment. Stanley hadn't taught him the f sound yet. Uh, f, whispered Zero. F, uh, fat. How about h, at, asked the warden. Stanley hadn't taught him the h sound either. Zero concentrated hard and then said, chat. All of the councillors laughed. He's a genius, all right, Miss Mr. Pandansky. He's so stupid, he doesn't even know he's stupid. Stanley didn't know why Mr. Pandansky seemed to have had zero in had it in for zero. If Mr. Pandansky only thought about it, he'd realise that it's very logical for zero to think about the H made the ch sound. Okay, from now on. I don't want anyone digging anybody else's holes, said the warden. And no more reading lessons. I'm not digging another hole, said Zero. Good, said the warden. She turned to Stanley. You know why you're digging your holes? Because it's good for you. It teaches you a lesson. If Zero digs your hole for you, you're not going to learn the lesson, are you? I guess not, said Stanley. Although he thought... They weren't digging just to learn a lesson. She was looking for something, something that belonged to kissing Kate Barlow. Why can't I dig my own hole, but still teach Zero to read? He asked. What's wrong with that? I'll tell you what's wrong with that, said the warden. It leads to trouble. Zero almost killed Zigzag. It causes him stress, said Mr. Pandansky. I know you mean well, Stanley, but... Face it, Zero's too stupid to learn to read. That's what makes his blood boil, not the hot sun. I'm not digging another hole, said Zero. Mr. Pandansky handed in the shovel. Here, take it, Zero. It's all you look you'll be good for. Zero took the shovel. Then he swung it like a baseball bat. The metal blade smashed Mr. Pandansky's face. His knees crumpled beneath him. He was unconscious before he hit the ground. The councillors all drew their guns. Zero held the shovel out in front of him as if it were going to try and bat away the bullets. I hate digging holes, he said. Then he slowly backed away. Don't shoot him, said the warden. He can't go anywhere. The last thing we need is an investigation. Zero kept backing up. Out past the cluster of holes the boys had been digging, then farther and farther onto the lake. He's going to come back for water said the warden. Stanley noticed Zero's canteen lying on the ground near his hole. A couple of the councillors helped Mr Pandansky to his feet and to the truck. Stanley looked out towards Zero, but he had disappeared into the haze. The warden ordered the councillors to take turns guarding the shower room and the rec room all day and all night. They were not to let Zero drink any water. When he returned, he was to be brought directly to her. She examined her fingernails and said, It's almost time for me to paint my nails again. Before she left, she told the six remaining members of Group D that she still expected seven holes.